Hey guys, it's Brittany with Brits Bitsy Bits and this video is going to be all about how to save an image and upload it to Blockposter to create a template for door hangers. So today's design is brought to you by Tiffany with Queen of My Castle Designs on Facebook and she, um, she has a template group called Tiff's Template Tribe and that's where this design is and I'm going to show you how to save this image and create your own template. So I have her permission to do this and I have purchased this template through her group and any image that you want to use you just want to make sure even if it's clip art off Google or something like that just make sure you get permission um, from the user the original creator to create a template and use it for profit. That's very important but we're not going to talk too much about copyrights in this video but just make sure that you are finding the original owner and asking permission and or you're purchasing the template and or copyrights for the image. So for this image we're going to right click and we're going to save image as and we're going to put it in our desktop and we're going to save it as Easter Bunny and we're going to hit save. Now we're going to go to block poster and this is what block poster it's www.blockposters.com so when you open it up this is what you're going to see and I just have the free version so I mean there'll be ads and things like that um, so get started and then we're going to upload your image and we're going to pick our bunny you see I have a couple saved they're the exact same image so we're going to click Easter Bunny and we're going to see him pop up here and how cute he is the first thing I like to do is crop my image because you see we have a bunch of extra white space and that will throw off your dimensions over here. So we want to crop image and we just want to use our little arrows right here to kind of pull it in as much as we can just eliminate as much of the white space as possible. Make sure we don't cut off any little spots. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to apply a crop and you see that kind of makes him look bigger but it really doesn't um that's all gonna reflect over here in the dimensions and i think y'all can read those so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking looking at the poster and figuring out um, our size so if you notice these dotted lines right here that is representing the piece of paper that that's gonna print on so this will be one sheet of paper this will be the second sheet of paper, third sheet of paper, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. So right now we're going to have nine sheets of paper that are actually 10, 11, 12. There's a little bit down here. So this is going to print 12 sheets of paper. That's really, really, really big. So if we notice right here, it tells me currently it's 25 inches wide and 34 inches high. So if we were to print and cut our entire bunny, from the widest points are going to be 25 inches wide and 34 inches high and that's just really really big for a door hanger so we want to resize it a little bit so we're going to come over here and we're going to look at our settings so this is where we're going to customize things my poster should be three pages wide so if you come over here you can count one two three so on the horizontal line here you notice we have three sheets of paper the orientation of the paper should be portrait or landscape. It's currently set to portrait, which means that our paper is portrait dimensions, okay? Now we can change this. We can say we want it landscape, and so now it's gonna be three pages wide, and it's gonna be landscape, which is like a horizontal sheet of paper where your paper kind of sits like that. But notice how many sheets of paper, oh my goodness, can you count them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's like yardstick size. You'll notice it's 33 inches wide and 44 inches high. That's way too big for a door hanger. It won't even fit on a door. But it is um, great if you want to do a yardstick. So you can literally print this out you could cut him paint him and put him in your yard and he would be so cute at Easter um, 
but we want to create a door hanger. So we're going to bring this down to two pages wide. And you notice it's still set to landscape here. So now we have two pages wide, one, two, and they're the landscape paper orientation. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sheets of paper for this guy. Our size is 22 inches wide and 29 inches high. That is a decent size. I mean, that's a big door hanger. 22 inches wide is right about where you want it to be. I like at least one of mine to be um, 24 to 25 inches, but we get that here with the height at 29 inches. So let's just test and see if we can even make him maybe a little smaller. So let's do, we're gonna keep two pages wide and then we're gonna click portrait. So now we have, <coughs> excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, well, four and a half, oh, excuse me, sheets of paper that we're going to use. So if we look, now this one's 17 inches wide and 22 inches high. So he's a little smaller than what I would originally like, because like I said, I like to have at least one thing be at least 24 to 25 inches high or wide, depending on the design. So I think I'd rather be a little bigger than a little smaller, just for my preference. But a lot of people, this is a standard size door hanger that is perfectly acceptable and people love them, okay? If you've got like a cute little apartment door or a back door, things like that, then making them a little smaller is great but I just like mine a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna stick with the 22 inches wide and the 29 inches high. And so once you set that, I don't change the paper format. I leave it letter US and I leave it with a border. This really, you can be borderless or have a border and it doesn't really change anything. When it prints, just printer settings, you're still gonna have a border. Um, I leave this unchecked because you have to pay extra to remove the block poster logo watermark thing. So it's not a big deal, I just leave it. Um, confirm our sizes again, 22 inches wide, 29 inches high. We're gonna check the box that we read and accept the terms of service. We're gonna create my poster. And now we're gonna click download your poster. And your poster will either come up automatically like mine has, or it might come over here to the, the download button, if you see over here in the top corner. And you can usually click it, and then you can say um, download. Usually I can click it twice, and when I download it will come up. So that's an easy way. Um, if you don't see it pop up, just look for your download uh, section. If you're on a Windows, it will come up down here with a like pop up usually down here at the bottom for you it'll say like download and then it'll say like save as and you can right click and save as um because i use windows a lot of times to do these um and that's how it works it comes up here down at the bottom and you can just click save as so if you're using windows that's how you do it if you're on a mac this is kind of how to do it then you can notice up here is the title of the document it's right now it gives it a standard block poster with a number. I always change mine because when I want to go search for it later, I want to be able to find it. So I'm going to type in the name Easter Bunny. And where do I want to save it? I want to save it to my desktop. And so that'll save that there. And we can come up in our um, finder. And we can click desktop. And there she is, there's our template. And so if you look at your template, when you print it, I don't have a printer connected to this right now, um, but you would come down to print and it'll give you all your options. You shouldn't have to change anything, except you may have to change uh, print on one side. So a lot of times they're defaulted to print um, you know, back to front, and you obviously don't want to do that. You want to print one for each side. So, um, you can select black and white. If you don't want to print all the color, I like the color. That's one of the big reasons that I do that. Um, all these things should be the same. 
and I don't see where mine says print um like back to front so mine should be okay but like I said I don't have a printer um, connected here so we're just gonna um, cancel this but you'll want to print him out and when he prints out it's gonna print out this is one sheet this is two sheets you can kind of see where your lines are and this first page is great I keep it on hand while I'm cutting and assembling because it kind of gives you an example of like how everything's gonna piece together like a puzzle and then you'll notice this is the first page and this is the second page and so in my next video I show you how to cut and assemble your templates and sketch them out on your wood so be sure to check out the next video in this series on Brits Bitsy Bits which is located in my Etsy shop at BK's Durable Designs. Um, I think it's www.etsy.com slash shop slash BK's Durable Designs and you should be able to find my Etsy shop where you purchase this um, tutorial and the next tutorial is how to take this template cut it and assemble it and then transfer it onto your wood and then the third video in the series is how to use a jigsaw to cut it out of your wood design and some tips and tricks on jigsaws and things like that so make sure you go check out the next videos in my series I appreciate you purchasing this one and supporting my little business and I really hope that it helped you and that you can create some amazing templates um, for your business and just remember follow copyright rules and instructions and laws and ask permission and find your favorite templates and you can create your own with images and things like that and I just hope you have a super successful business and thanks for supporting mine. Bye guys!